Hello and welcome to Energy Storage Europe 2019. I'm Jonathan Gifford. And I'm Michel Fuss. And today, for the next few minutes, we're going to take you on a quick tour around the trade show floor, pointing out some of the more interesting pieces of technology and kit for energy storage applications in Europe today. And we are on a boat. And I suppose we should say, Michel, why are we on a boat? Yes, it's because the company which brought this boat to Energy Storage Europe, they produce a battery which is used for mobility applications, for example for boats. They manufacture batteries which, are, which have some special use case for all sorts of mobility applications where you don't have this large number of pieces like for example a Mercedes-Benz has. They, of course they don't need to buy special batteries, they manufacture them themselves. But if you have lower number of pieces, up to 2,000 number of pieces a year, then it makes sense to look at this product which of the company which bought the boat here. And the company we're talking about is called EcoVolta. So they're from Brunnen in Switzerland, a few hundred meters away from where William Tell conducted his rather foolhardy experiment using an apple. And the battery units that they do supply use uh, lithium ion NMC technology, NMC cells, and they arrange it in such a way that they can be charged and discharged so as to not let off any heat that they say is particularly safe. And as Mikhail mentioned, the battery units themselves are stackable, so they can be uh, connected in series and also they can uh, be they come pre-certified which means it's really suitable for, for smaller companies that don't have perhaps the financial wherewithal to certify batteries specifically for their mobility products. Yeah. They say for example that the investment required for undergo this certification is something about 500,000 euros and obviously it's smaller companies for them it's a big big piece of money. And for a luxury boat maker like Ernesto Rivo Riva in Italy, it's a perfect fit. Obviously battery storage is a big topic here at energy storage in Düsseldorf, but not only battery storage, also in the power to gas industry you see a big movement I think, a big push this year. And you Jonathan yesterday have visited DMVGL, what did they say about power to gas? Well DMVGL has carried out a study published literally yesterday um, about the viability of green hydrogen and when it will find its place in the energy mix here in Europe. And, and the DMVGL study found that by 2035 they see a, com a competitive place for green hydrogen in Europe's electricity yeah. mix or and energy mix. I mean this is two messages. It's one is that it will be competitive which is great but the other one is that it will be only in 2035 which is 16 years from now on. So it's a why, why so late? Why not earlier? Well, I spoke to the report's lead author, Teo Bosma, and, and, and he reported that there's a number of preconditions or things that are absolutely vital for green hydrogen to find its place in the energy market here in Europe. And one of those is the number of hours at which large amounts of solar and wind generated electricity um, starts to flood into the grid, flood into networks and onto electricity markets, particularly at certain points during the day or night, and push electricity prices down to zero or even below. So the more wind and solar, the quicker then uh, the competitive place for hydrogen will find itself in the market. But obviously there's a discussion about this 2035 year because others, maybe they think that it will be earlier and we will now go to them and see what they say. So while some of the uh, electrolysis suppliers, uh, the, the machines to produce hydrogen, green hydrogen, might be a little bit dispirited by the DNVGL prediction of 2035, they're also turning their hand at bringing down costs. Yes, and we have yesterday we have visited Enapta, for example, and Enapta, I, I think you have to cut here. What's his name? That's right, Sebastian Justus Schmidt is the founder. Yeah, and he told us that he thinks that if they do their job, they can also achieve this goal at 2025. Yeah. And, and the way to achieving that goal, to, to, to bring down costs, is through scale. Yeah, and for this reason, they have produced a modular power to gas unit. It's a, it's a box, it's something like this, for example. And it has an electric power of about 2 kilowatt, and you can just, it's all connected, and you can just add blocks of this in order to scale it up. And they want to start with larger scale production soon. 
And they say there's parallels to like the early years of the automotive industry. Yeah, that was funny yesterday. He said, if you compare power to gas industry to automotive industry, we are in the year 1917. So just before Henry Ford produced the Model T, which really started the scaling of the car manufacturing. So only in the 1920s for electrolysis. But of course, on the other side of power to gas is then the conversion of hydrogen back into electricity via the use of fuel cells. So let's look at an application of that next. So this we're talking about not power to gas, but gas to power. Yeah, and this is a fuel cell. This is a device with 37 kilowatt produced by a company called Volton Motor. And this means you feed in hydrogen, you get 37 kilowatt of electricity going out, has an efficiency of about 50%, but at the same time you get 37 kilowatt of heat going out. And if you use that heat, then you can increase the overall system efficiency quite a bit. Well, and we know here in Europe, one of the challenges is not only decarbonizing the electricity sector, but also the heating sector. Yeah, and they already have a blighter system. There's a department house in Switzerland where they really, it's just 100% self-sufficient using electrolysis, so producing hydrogen when you have with solar energy, and then using such a device to, to produce, to generate electricity and heat. And of course, Switzerland gets pretty chilly, so that's important. <laughs> Yeah, and they are also proud that it survived the first winter. Well, there's other use cases for fuel cells as well. Let's go and check one out. Yeah. Well, one of the advantages of hydrogen is not only that you can produce electricity and heat from a fuel cell, it can also be used in mobility, much like batteries. Here behind us from the ZBT, a research institute based around this part of Germany, not far from Dusseldorf in Duisburg, um, they have expertise in fuel cells and have created this truck to demonstrate the portability of hydrogen, how you can store a hell of a lot of en energy in a truck like this, a four-wheel drive truck, and get it out and, out and about off the beaten track and supply vehicles, but can also supply electricity from this mobile storage. Yeah, it can be, for example, also important if you produce the hydrogen at the windmills or at the solar plants, because it's to, to transport it also in some way to the fueling station. So either you can steal it directly or you can use such trucks to transport it to fueling stations. And the ZBT says that this truck will be fully ready and operational in summer 2019. This is only the second time they've taken it out of their home base. There's uh, 500 kilograms of uh, hydrogen stored in here. They've got an electrolyzer on board that can produce four kilowatt peak. And they say they can do that for 180 yeah. hours. I mean, now you're saying that this truck also can produce electricity. That is also some special thing. It doesn't, it's not only a fuel station. We can also use it as power supply. Four kilowatts, 108 hours? 180 hours, How? 180. Oh, that's incredible. So. Yeah, quite a long time. It's a four wheel drive truck. So in perhaps natural disasters or cases like that, you could take it out, keep things moving, keep you know fueling trucks or forklifts or these kind of vehicles and also producing electricity. But there is, Still some skepticism, um, Mikael, about yeah. power to gas, in particular hydrogen. Yeah, we talked to a lot of analysts, and I mean, some are very skeptical that power to gas will really come. They are asking why, what should, why should we do that? Efficiency is uh, only 50%. If we say electricity in, electricity out, batteries have approaching 95% or something like that. So why that? But of course, there's the topic of seasonal storage. And it's not clear so far how much seasonal storage will be necessary. It's also not clear how the aircraft should go and, and also how the trucks will be powered. So there's still room for development, I think. Absolutely. And the energy transition is always a very fluid place. There's always a lot going on. It's moving very quickly. So we will see whether power to gas will find its place or whether batteries will come to the fore in this energy storage world. Yeah, and we will observe that in the coming years. Absolutely. So join us uh, next year, I suppose, at Energy Storage Europe here in Dusseldorf.